what do you make of this influential, you know, kind of these towering figures that really yeah. do suck up all the oxygen and and kind of yeah. mandate the direction of the field, like the Weinbergs, like the, you know, nowadays there's many of them, many young ones, and I, I don't want to criticize any of them, but there are very few working on what I would say are the flaws. Right. And often I hear, I hear this, Neil, I hear, well, inflation is right. not a theory and the multiverse isn't a theory. It's a consequence of a paradigm. And I'm like, right. well, well, where do we go to hear about, you know, like, uh, these are, all, the, theory, these right? are just these, these are uh, excuses, honestly, they're just excuses. And it, it takes some courage um, to say that out loud. I could really only do it because I was, you know, academically secure. I had a position. In fact, the reason I really came to my view that the field has gone wrong is that I was director of Perimeter Institute, which was the fastest growing, best supported institute dedicated to theoretical physics in the world. And right. so my responsibility was to hire young people who were actually going to make discoveries, you know, and I was committed to doing that. And so I had to look very carefully at all the different fields of theoretical physics and weigh up the real prospects of progress. And during that, it put me in a very unique position where I, I sort of had to have an overview of the whole field. And based on that, I had to be objective because, you know, we, we were uh, essentially investing in a place where, which had opportunities to invest like no other. What I decided is that um, going, with this, going with the flow was absolutely not the way forward. So I made that decision in my capacity as director. I also made it personally in my own research. And because I had the freedom with my own research to go down whatever path I, I wanted, this really made me rethink everything. So now you asked about Maxwell. Maxwell is an amazing example. Uh, what happened historically was, you know, he was a product of his environment. Edinburgh and, and Scotland at that point, it was, it was the age of Scottish Enlightenment in the 18th century. And they questioned everything. They questioned, you know, Big Brother in England. Uh, England had two universities, Oxford and Cambridge, and Scotland had three. <laughs> okay. And the Scottish ones had a totally different philosophy, which was public access. So no matter which background you came from, bright kids were very strongly encouraged to go to university. And so in this environment, people, uh, essentially the mentors of Maxwell, were trained and uh, you know blossomed. So people like David Hume, Adam Smith in economics, these people rethought everything from scratch, okay? And so that was the culture Maxwell was, was raised in. And being very bright, he then went to Cambridge. Uh, I mean, he went to Cambridge after he made his discovery about light and electromagnetism. He was absolutely unafraid to challenge the orthodoxy. And you're quite right to say that his way of picturing the world turned out not to be, you know, what we use now. We take the mathematics much more seriously than we take the machines that he used to build the mathematics. But, uh, but that doesn't matter at all. I mean, the equations are valid. And I would say Maxwell's equations are actually guiding us to what happened at the Big Bang because they guided Einstein to his theory of gravity. Einstein said that. He's basically developing a version, a theory for gravity modeled on Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. Maxwell's equations tell you about relativity, the speed of light, uh, ultimately told you about photons and quantum mechanics. And so, you know, Maxwell is sort of the inspiration for modern theoretical physics. The wisdom is in nature. That's my wow. guiding, guiding philosophy. <laughs> I think uh, nature keeps us on the right path. The recent discoveries, right? The universe has turned out to be surprisingly simple. The Higgs was found, nothing else was found. No multiverse in the sky, right? It's simplicity itself. Are we able to learn from that? I literally feel that the universe is our guide. That, that's the role it plays for humankind. And it has, if you think about it, when people, you know, in, in the Stone Age, you know, looked up at the sky and they thought, wow, you know, that's amazing. And so it lifts you beyond yourself. 
it has ima- unimaginable sort of beauty, grandeur. That comes from symmetry. It's not chaos, right? The universe is the furthest thing you can imagine from chaos. Mm. That's in a sense why, and and this matters not a single thing scientifically, but this is why I don't really like the idea of uh, a chaotic multiverse. You know, I, I can see why some people find it appealing, but for me, it's the opposite. Uh, that the universe is a guide. It shows us, I mean, I, I think about the history of physics, you know, how did Newton learn the laws of motion? It wasn't on earth. It was by watching the planet, by taking data from the planets. He didn't, he did the easy work. He just did the math. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Other people took the observations. So, you know, time and again, and again, and likewise with Maxwell, you know, Maxwell always gave credit to Faraday. Faraday discovered the laws of electricity and magnetism, uh, plus some other people, but Faraday probably most coherently. Experimentally. And experimentally. And Maxwell just had to write down the math which oh. described those laws. And Maxwell gave all the credit to Faraday. Now, what he was doing is not so much being kind to experimentalists. He was saying, nature tells us how it works. We just have to listen. Okay. And that is the job of a theorist, to listen. The criticism I have of my own field and my own earlier work is we weren't listening. You know, we were so full of ourselves. We said, oh, we'll come along and introduce an extra dimension and brains and all kinds of uh, phenomena, imaginary phenomena, you know, but, and to be fair to us, we didn't have that much data. You know, now we have tons of data and it's all going in this direction of extreme simplicity and economy. And so I think any theorist worth their salt should be forced now to reconsider and say, you know, maybe my model was just too complicated. 